Forbes Media Chairman Steve sitting here as we watch the president on his Zoom and he's chuckling. We're going to get to some of that. Let's start with all this tomfoolery around the definition of a recession. What's going on here? Well, beauty may be in the eye of a beholder, but a recession is a recession. Mm. There's no getting around it. Two quarters straight. And uh, they may try to pretty it up. But the fact of the matter is, people feel incomes are not going up as fast as prices. Uh, the economy, they don't feel, is going the way it should. There are many of them are dipping into savings. Mm -hmm. They're seeing interest rates go up, which means that they're using credit card debt. They know where that, what direction right. that's going into. If you look at housing sales, you look at some of the other economic reports, things are not very rosy right now. So why not acknowledge the economy's in trouble? Mm. Here's what we want to do about it. They're leaning really heavily on that jobs number, 3.6% unemployment. Are you as confident about that holding, Steve, as the administration well, is? It, it, it's because of the peculiarity of what happened with the shutdowns, uh, that number is going to be a bit of an anomaly. But remember, when a, uh, high tech companies do layoffs, that ricochets through the whole supply chain. There are a lot of companies that employ people <clears throat> putting in uh, products and uh, raw materials for these uh, companies. So as they lay off, that's going to go through the economy. And we're hearing a lot about hiring freezes and pulling back and hiring, especially from those tech companies. I want to go to the gas issue for a second here. Take a look at this video of White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre bragging about those declining gas prices. Watch. Hey, everybody. So gas prices have been declining across the country. In the past more than 30 days, we have seen gas prices go down by more than 50 cents per gallon. So let's get into some graphs. This is so exciting, guys. I'm in the graph. This is very exciting, Steve. She's in that graph. They want credit badly for this uh, tick down in gas prices. Do they deserve any? Uh, the answer, of course, is no. Uh, although, like uh, roosters in the morning, when the sun goes up, they're going to take credit for it. And, 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 and so, and so, uh, and so the, they weren't boasting when gas went from 2.30 and change when he took office to as high as five dollars a gallon. And things can happen. And uh, for the president to go barf, go go talking about oh, oil companies, we want you to invest. Right. Well. If you find oil, can you get it out of there? Are you permitting pipelines and things like that? Are you encouraging offshore drilling and the like? No. Are you fast permitting liquefied natural gas facilities? No. All the things that make an industry happen. And if you're in an industry where you're making five-year projections in terms of where you're going to invest money, do you believe these people are going to uh, not pull the rug out from you when they think politically they can get away with right. it? It, it, it? It's like... He's never thought, and probably because he hasn't, because he has zero private sector experience, he's never thought about all of the things it takes to do what he's asking oil companies to do. He says, you just need to refine more product. Mr. President, do, do you know what refining oil well, he thinks, actually entails? He, he, he thinks you call up Amazon and say, give me a refinery. It seems deliver, that way. Deliver it in 48 hours. What he, too bad when he was a kid, it didn't go what some of the kids in my school did, is they take you to a dairy so you understood where milk came from. It comes from the cows. You've got to milk the cows. You've got to pasteurize the milk. You've got to bottle. You've got to deliver. And all those things that go into getting what you were getting the, each day. They have no conception of all the intricacies that go into it, all the details right. that go into it. it you know, you don't expect the president of the United States to understand how to run every company in the economy, but you do expect him to have an appreciation for the fact that it's complex and that if the government makes it harder to invest, to build, to hire, you're not going to get good things. And you have a president right now whose only strategy seems to be to browbeat companies he doesn't like and browbeat industries he doesn't like. And he's expecting that to somehow turn the corner for him and for America. Steve, I think companies walk away from what we just saw, that Zoom video of him. I think they walk away saying, this is worse than I thought. He has no idea what he's talking about. Yes, and until people feel there's an environment where these things can be done safely, it's risky enough making mm -hmm. an investment. But if you don't know what the value of the dollar is going to be, you don't know what regulations these people are going to try to put on you, you're going to hold back and mm -hmm. see, see what unfolds. Right. And the Supreme Court made a great decision in that West Virginia case about not putting on the regulations without the real authority of Congress. But the administration's already made it clear they're going to try to do runarounds on it, on how you phrase these things yep. or just ram them through in the first place. Hope you get a new Supreme Court, pack the Supreme Court or something like that not conducive to, they talk about animal spirits. No, it's just about the idea, I want to get ahead, I'll take a risk, but don't make it more difficult than it already is. Yeah, businesses don't 
you know, they'll ask for whatever Washington will give them, but the truth is what they really need is some stability and the ability to plan ahead. And right now they've got an administration that wants to talk about declaring climate emergencies, making the, making the regulatory burdens on businesses so much more complex. That whatever growth potential the U.S. economy has, it gets killed by the regulatory overhang. And you're a great champion on, on, on letting us know about that message and making sure that everyone knows we've got to go the opposite direction. God let the Biden administration listen to some of the things that Steve Forbes says. We got to leave it there, Steve. I'm sorry we're out of time. Elections are coming. That'll force a change. <laughs> there you go. There's the punctuation. <laughs> Thank you, Steve Forbes. Thank Always you. good to see you.